kind of this pressure, looking at a comic book, seeing Superboy and Superman ripped out of their minds and stuff. Um, what kind of pressure are you under when it comes to just having the super title? Did it excite you that you were joining this? Did you feel pressure, both? What, are, what were you feeling? Both, absolutely. Um, first of all, I, I've been a fan of the genre since I was very young. So I, I've been a Superman fan. I've been a fan of superheroes in general. So even from the perspective of a fan, uh, it was incredibly cool to be, as you say, to be joining that, that super family. And um, I, I kind of touched on this before, but uh, when you get a role like this, particularly with that label super in the title, you kind of enter the, enter the, the, the canon, if you like, of the history of actors that have, that have played these roles. Whatever you do, for better or worse, is going to be a part of that, you know, that history, that continuity of live action versions of these beloved characters. And what, you, as a fan and also just as an actor, you want, you want what you do to be received in a positive way because you know it's going to be remembered ultimately. So, what's your favorite part about playing Connor? Oh boy, my favorite part. There's so many good things. I remember remarking on the, in the script, the whole story arc for season two, at, at the variety of kind of, of moments and different sides of myself that I, that I was required to, to access in order to play the character. And it was really facilitated by the scripts. I get to show so many different sides of just the one character. I love the duality of the, the darkness and the light that's, in, that's inherited in, inherent in the character. I feel like just tapping into that, that child, childlike kind of that wonder and those fantasies that you have as a kid when you play pretend as a superhero. And I feel like as an adult now playing this character, I'm tapping back into that. And that's, that's quite cathartic and uh, surreal at times. So I think that's probably the main thing, just getting to dress up and play pretend for real as a superhero. Often those illustrations can be quite daunting in terms of the physicality of the character. So I really wanted to try and uh, try my best to bring, bring that physically to the screen on Titans. My preparation kind of begins, depending on how much notice I have, two or three months out from, from shooting. And then it continues as I'm shooting. Um, but I suppose in terms of the training, I train the hardest before, before I go to camera because it's tough to, to kind of maintain that while you're, while you're working. Um, but yeah, essentially what it boils down to is just a lot of strength training, resistance training, and um, strict, strict eating <laughs> for the duration of uh, the shoot. You mentioned comics and source material. What were kind of your go-tos when it came to getting motivation to be a Connor? I did have a, quite a strong focus on the, on the Jeff Johns stuff from the early 2000s with Superboy as a member of the Teen Titans. Um, but I also looked at, you know, some of the, the new 52 and some of those, those, newer, those newer books. And the character kind of changes so much and it, he's been reinterpreted over the years um, that I, I felt that it was possible to, to interpret it in, yet again in another new way, something fresh, a little unique. And, and I was very happy to see when I got that first script for episode six of season two that the writers had kind of been thinking along the same lines and I, I got the script and it was it was great I thought it was really original and a fresh take on the character uh, we kind of know this this version of Superboy in, in Titans more or less has the the powers of Superman but perhaps uh to a lesser degree uh in terms of power level we've seen already that he he's he's able to use his powers in kind of new and more inventive ways. I really enjoyed how he was able to combine the, uh, that intelligence and that natural aptitude for, for science inherited from his, his Lex Luthor DNA with the, the Superman super speed. I feel like that's been really, really useful for the team thus far. As viewers will have seen, um, Hank was killed in episode three of season three and Connor really holds himself responsible to a large degree for that he feels guilt immense guilt and that event for him 
that failure is, is cataclysmic and it, it spirals him off into the, the storyline that we, that we kind of follow him on for the rest of the season. Um, and yeah, without saying too much to give it away, um, he has reached a place in his development where he's kind of ready for, to explore his options romantically and, and to learn about that side of himself, um, begin to em, embark on a journey of discovering his sexuality, which is something we all, we all kind of deal with at one point or another, but he's kind of thrust into that quite abruptly in the wake of this, this monumental failure as he sees it. And um, that informs the experience for him as, as you'll see, it's quite interesting. 